Hi, Denise. Hey, Mark. So today we're going to talk through this nonprofit YouTube series. Perfect. One thing I was thinking that I particularly love about Denver and Seattle is the sense of community and philanthropy. And I think that, right, Mark, given especially the circumstances we're facing right now, I think we're getting a lot of inquiries about how can I help and how do I start a nonprofit? So what better opportunity than to give everybody a playlist? I love it. That's a great point. So like you said, we're in crazy times right now. We're all under stay-at-home orders because of COVID-19. And so we're filming this over Zoom from our various home offices. We're going to each take uh, several videos in this playlist one by one. And this will be the legal checklist for starting a nonprofit. For this video, we're just going to run through kind of the table of contents of what videos we're going to talk about in this series. And I did just want to point out that I am from our Seattle office. Mark is in our Denver office. So for what it's worth, we are filming across multiple states. So the first video that we're going to talk about is the importance of defining your mission for a nonprofit. This seems simple enough, but you want to keep in mind that your mission statement is front and center, much more in a nonprofit than you would think. And then we will talk about determining your who. So we also have a uh, video playlist on the legal checklist for startups in general. It's not as good because it's just me. It's really a different issue for nonprofits because you will definitely need to think about your board of directors, your executives. Those things are even asked about when you're applying for a 501c3 status. And then the third video that we are going to turn to is going to be talking about your funding sources. Especially the nonprofit, it's really important to make sure that you're thinking through how are you going to not only launch your nonprofit, meaning where's the funding going to come from to, to get your great idea off the ground, but then you need to think about how is your nonprofit going to continue to bring in funds to sustain its operations. Next, we'll talk about the difference between a private foundation and a public charity. You've got to decide what type of nonprofit are you. And we'll even touch on the idea of, okay, you you want to do good in the world, but there are also ways to do that as a for-profit company, such as a public benefit corporation or a B Corp. So we'll talk about those different types of nonprofits and even some for-profit companies in the next video. And then after that, I guess I'll do two in a row. The next video will be, should you use a fiscal agent? That's a good way to kind of dip your toe in the water if you're not ready to be totally self-sufficient yet. But it comes with some drawbacks as well. So we'll talk about those in the next video in the series. And then the next video we will go to is all about creating your budget. And this may seem simple enough, but it's definitely a fundamental necessity. A thorough and a detailed budget can be the difference between financial survival and thriving. You know, I think everybody would agree the devil is in the details. And one thing also that we need to make sure to touch on is are there any restrictions on any of those funding sources that we talked about? But are there any restrictions that you need to factor into when it comes to doing your budgeting? Great. And then just like your budget, the next thing we'll talk about is your narrative, which is something that you'll have to include in your application for 501c3 nonprofit status with the IRS. So your narrative is just your story. It's where everything comes together. Your who, what, when, where, and why, what you're trying to accomplish, and is it really for a a charitable purpose, a public benefit that the government will recognize as a legitimate nonprofit purpose. And then the next thing that you are going to want to do is draft up your articles of incorporation and potentially your bylaws. Some states are going to require that you have bylaws at the same time that you file your articles of incorporation. Others won't. To touch on it briefly, bylaws are effectively, they're kind of your nonprofit's operating manual. Um, how they're operating, not internally, that could be confused with your employee manual, but it's definitely something that you need to make sure to go over to make sure that you know what it is that you need in those bylaws. If you're starting a nonprofit, 
you're going to have to deal with both your state government and the federal government. So in the next video, we're going to talk about incorporating with your state and also registering with your state for sales tax exemption. Next, we're going to talk about how you obtain your EIN from the IRS. This is essentially your nonprofit's employer identification number, so your federal tax number. It's important, though, to pay attention to the timing of when you file for your EIN, and we'll discuss that a little more in depth because effectively you want to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row for your nonprofit before you take that step of filing for your EIN. Well, the next step is going to be establishing a separate accounting system for your nonprofit, as well as separate bank accounts for your nonprofit. Um, I think one downfall that we see easily is people trying to run everything through their personal accounts. So we'll talk about that in detail. And then in the next video, it's kind of the main event is your IRS form 1023. That's the huge packet of stuff that you put together and send off to the IRS as an, your application to achieve 501c3 tax-exempt status as a nonprofit with the federal government, specifically the IRS. So we'll talk about that whole application in that next video. The next step is that you want to determine whether or not there are any specific liabilities that you need to be considering and also what the insurance needs are of your nonprofit. And this can vary depending on what specific industry your nonprofit may be geared towards and where it may be operating. So it's important to make sure that you know where all your liabilities lie. Then the next video is about setting up your basic contracts. You've got vendors, maybe independent contractors. Uh, maybe people you serve, all sorts of contracts that you need to think about to get your relationships defined and have you very organized from the get-go. So that'll be actually our last substantive video in the playlist. And then you and I will meet up again for another Zoom meeting to kind of uh, recap what we went through. Sounds great, Mark. There's a lot to go over. No wonder people are confused. <laughs> That's right. I think it'll be fun. We'll see how this turns out.